What's that smell? God almighty. Oh. Back over here. Seriously, what is that smell? God. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. It's Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Oh. God. How long have you been here? Well, I guess the old saying is, when you're dead, you're dead. How the frick did you get killed by fucking cardboard box? You're like the most wimpiest little human, or was a human, ever. Ooh. Well, my contact's gonna be pissed. The Wilhelm's dead. Too bad you can't star in that movie anymore. Ah, shit. Oh hi there! You may be wondering who the hell am I and where do I come from? Since the first episode was a complete, I guess you could say disaster, and not, not really so much, but anyways, I thought me, Torfarlux, will explain the story to you. I come from an alien planet called Vontex, uh, nothing really special, just a regular planet, kind of looks like, I don't know, have you ever, ever taken a look at the picture of, uh, the flippin' No Man's Sky, you know, poster. That's sort of what it looks like on the surface. Minus the bugs. Figure of speech. Anyways, <clears throat> a world in which my people, the terraformers, or so they are called, the Tartek Hath. In other words, you just call us terraformers. It's it's easier that way. Anyways. Uh, lived one of many worlds, I should say. When I was a young man at the age of 35 and had a wife and a daughter to boot, everything was going fine until my planet was attacked. Yeah. By an alien race called the Stog, similar to the Strog from Quake. Basically, zombie based cyborgs. Nasty. <clears throat> my wife was killed and my daughter's body's gone presumably been, was killed in the accident. Stricken in despair and consumed by rage, I went insane. After all the Stog were fighting my people for almost 200 years. My people, for almost 200 years, fought them in an ongoing war called the Great Galactic War. In the last years of the Great Galactic War, me and my fleet went out and searched for the Strog and any other solar systems outside of reach of the Terraformer Empire. That is when we found them on a planet called Planet Cavern. And uh, to be quite frankly, it is not Planet Cavern, the song for Black Sabbath, 
it's just the name of the fucking planet, okay? Anyways, I can't exactly remember what happened on that planet, but I know it wasn't pretty. I only remember landing on the planet's surface and leaving the planet's surface. That's it, really all I can remember. After the war, 75 years have passed for me. In those 75 long years, I have been traveling the universe and traveling through time and space like the doctor. <coughs> Saving people and preventing crimes before they even happen. I did this for, in a way, to redeem myself for the loss of my family and my planet, which I suffered for the past 75 years. And that is when I travel back to the planet Cavern. Almost 300 years into the future, where now the humans have colonized this planet and have set up their new, next new home, I should say. This is where our story begins. Six days ago, I had some stuff um, for my next mission, and I will explain what that is in a minute. I went over to the intergalactic storage facility called Tance Industries. There I met up a cybernetic robotic teddy bear by the name of Blackie, powered by no other than a whole small little tiny nano machines that pretty much act as either its fabric or cotton if you want to call it. Long story. <clears throat> And trust me, I honestly don't even care how the fucking thing works. Oh, where was I? Let me just read the script here. Oh, I lost contact. Finishing up the long story. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Long story, and to be frank, I can't remember as to why I left the box. Those guys in the first place at that facility at Tans Industries. I leave the planet, go back to Earth in the year 2016 to get briefed about the mission. You gotta understand that I'm kind of like Deadpool, in a sense, that I do jobs for people for money I was like a mercenary for if you will like Lobo from DC Comics but more polite like a Canadian the people that gave me the job was the SCP Foundation these guys are an Interpol organization that contains anomalies and creatures which I pretty much explained like in the second episode but anywho they pretty much protect their little blue planet they call Earth if you want to know more about them, honestly, like I keep saying, go on their flipping website. <clears throat> they got in their facility, the, the SCP Foundation, is a sexually confused statue, a creepy old guy that phases through walls and has some other dude in, in charge of the facilities that looks like the American version of the Morton Joe from Mad Max. You see, I was a desperate at the time for gold. I kind of need it for my poor wiring in my ship. Back to the story. <clears throat> At any rate, six days later, I go back to the planet cavern later to find out that the planet was attacked by my worst enemy, the Stog. Anyways, these intergalactic writers, they stole my box of goodies from me. But thankfully, I had placed an interspatial transmitter. So now I can find my box anywhere in time and space. But only one problem. Yeah. Is that it's on the puppet Blackie. Don't ask me how the frick he managed to get it onto him. I mean, maybe they shoved it up his ass. Who knows? <clears throat> and he has been taken captive <laughs> by a necromancer by the name of Nacross. Nacross. Which I later discovered that Nacross had collected a large number of undead zombies and, pl and plotted, excuse me, to take over the world in the year 2016, a little place called Valley View, Alberta, Canada. A little town, if you will. I don't know how she got there, or how she travels through time and in, in space, in her spaceship, and quite frankly, I don't even care. After all, she's just the minor antagonist in this story that gets shot by this guy. Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, this guy, his name is Oscar Dublin, a private in the MTF Alpha One of the Foundation. And don't worry, in the next episode, Oscar, or maybe even in this one, Oscar will have a chance to explain 
his side of the story in the next episode. But first things first, let's show you the death of a minor character by the name of Necros, the intergalactic bitch that looks so ugly that she honestly looks like a Halloween decoration from a dollar store. She's so crazy and has the abilities to turn living things into zombies. Well, that's necromancer for you. Just your typical crazy psychopath that just kills people for no, for no apparent reason at all. And a wanted criminal in parts of the nearby galaxy. <clears throat> Doesn't surprise me. Hmm, it seems that the signal to uh, where Blackie is, is originating here in the basement of this creepy house. Seems like there could be somebody else in here. Better watch myself. Alright Blackie, I'm coming in and I want answers, partner. Master, uh, master, we got a serious problem. Tor's here! Tor's here! Quiet. Woo, guess who? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh. Ah, found ya, Blackie. <laughs> not being racist, okay, viewers? Not being racist. What are you talking to? Sh and then, I'll be quiet, I'll be quiet, I swear, I swear, I swear, I'll be quiet, I'll be quiet. Oh, who are you supposed to be, huh? The, the crypt keeper? The gatekeeper? The crypt, the crypt gatekeeper? I don't know. I am Necrus. I am a necromancer. I am the almighty lord. I will devour all of your souls. I <laughs> Uh, not anymore. All right, you're coming with me, little guy. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. I'm in trouble. Or well, you're going to meet Mr. Shotgun here. It's your choice. Either I blow your head off with Mr. Shotgun, or you're coming with me. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Come on. There we go. Wait, wait. Good. Come on. Yeah. Bad boy. Uh, uh, I, that bastard. Who was that guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 